Hi YouTube! In today's video, I'm going to be discussing 1950s fashion. This is because on personal styling sessions with me, sometimes I'm like, oh, this looks like a 50s piece. And people are like, I don't really get what 1950s fashion looks like. So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about what to look out for so that you know in the future when people say 1950s, kind of what that looks like. And if you like it and you're like, yeah, this vibes with me, you can know how to dress like that yourself in the current day. Just a disclaimer, I'm not a fashion historian, historian, anything like that. I'm just a bit of a nerd about fashion and I know some stuff and I'd like to share it with you. So let's get into it. Let me set the scene for you a little bit. Post-war, 1947, Dior's new look came around and changed how fashion would look in that era. It gave you this tiny little waist and really big hemline. Clothing became more fitted to show off that hourglass body shape that you will see in most of 1950s clothing. Skirts were longer and fuller because they had more fabric to play with, less scrimping and saving like there was in the war. Waspy girdles came out giving women quite pointy looking breasts. I don't know if you ever see stuff from the 50s and you're like, that looks kind of strange and unnatural. <laughs> Women are no longer having to help with the war effort and working, they're back to being housewives unfortunately. They're entertaining, they're mingling with other housewives, having parties, eating cakes, doing the house, that kind of thing. Clothes weren't designed for manual labour anymore, they didn't have to be like a dungaree or like a nice easy pocketed trouser, they were purely for looking pretty in. And who was to make the pretty clothing? People love French fashion, they loved saying that they'd got it from France, it was just a cool country in the eyes of fashion. And still nowadays when you say French fashion people think that's a you know, a good thing, a big deal, you want to look French. Well, in the 50s in particular. Some of the bigger designers were Dior, as I said, Chanel, Givenchy and Balenciaga. They were kind of ruling the fashion scene at this time. The stiletto had just been invented, which was the strongest, highest and thinnest heel. Before, like in the 40s, you were getting these small heels because obviously things were about function, you just wanted to get from A to B, run around, hide from a bomb, that kind of thing. But now women weren't having to walk that much, you know, maybe to do the grocery shopping, they could wear impractical shoes like this that made their legs look long and sexy. Speaking of that, the bikini was also invented in this time. Bikinis have been around in history before, and by bikinis I just mean a top and a bottom to swim in, but in this era you were getting the skimpiest bikini of all time. This was created by an engineer called Louis Riard, never had to say that out loud, don't know how to pronounce it, but that's his name. He made a skimpier version which is kind of like the bikinis you now see today. So the bikini, where it actually got his name from, was Bikini Atoll, which was a nuclear test site, as he believed it would be explosive in its creation, which it definitely was when it exploded onto the scene. <laughs> People are now able to go on holidays to the beaches and not have to worry and relax, and, you know, they deserved a holiday and they wanted to go out looking sexy in this skimpy two-piece. In the 50s, Suddenly hair became quite a lot shorter, you were getting a lot of bobbed looks like all of those film stars, you were getting these pixie cuts which you see, quite a few messy pixie cuts you would see on people like Sophia Loren, also very short with fringes but you'd get these fringes that were just above the eyebrows and usually a little bit curled under or to the side. This was quite a young look. Speaking of young looks as well, especially with all the preppy fashion going on, you would get a lot of these cute bows in the hair and hair bands and little ponytails which were neat and curled with a bow on top. The makeup of this time tended towards a red lip. That was mainly what all the women were wearing. And maybe if you were a teenager, you were going for like a pink. Typically makeup wise as well, it'd be red lip, red nail or pink lip, pink nail. Things weren't very creative in that time, let's just say it was very easy and traditional. We were also getting the cat eyeliner, which is just that kind of black with the flick, which was a calling card of the rockabilly style, which I will go into now as we get into the teenager and subcultures. So the teenager, the term teenager emerged in America first. 
is that in between age, they're not a kid, they're not their mum clutching their pearls and wearing all those fancy dresses and entertaining their mates. They're going to school, they're more casual, they're more cool. They don't want to look frumpy like their mums. So many of them became beatniks or rockabillies. Think about Greece if you've ever seen it. It's a really good movie just to show kind of what subcultures look like in that time. Now, Greece is actually from the 70s, but it's them doing the 50s, so it's their take on what the 50s looked like. Beatniks preferred like a capri trouser, flat shoe, a knit, a jumper, which is quite a contrast to their mums wearing that kind of tight, bodiced, big skirted dress. This is a completely different silhouette. The mum in their heel, the kid in their flat shoes, they could dance, put on their records with their mates. A great depiction of this kind of beatnik style is the movie Funny Face with Audrey Hepburn. You can see her in this style a lot. Beatniks tend to wear all black outfits as well. Not just the film being black and white, but it's that kind of cool artsy undergroundy look. You can probably imagine them with like a striped t-shirt and a beret and smoking something. It's The style got it was there in the 60s too. Now the greaser wore a biker jacket, a plain white tee, a jean, maybe a converse or a biker boot, but they were called a greaser because of the grease in their hair. So when you watch Greece and you see like the tea birds, which were typical greasers, you can see their hair is full of grease and they're constantly combing it to make these kind of pompadour, quiffy looks. That was like a typical greaser thing. Rockabillies, quite similar. They like their jeans with a nice thick roll up in it as well. So a selvage jean where you can see the stitching down it. And the shoes that they wore typically were, other than the converse, were a saddle shoe. So it's like a black and white shoe. You see it a lot in just ordinary like 50s teenage fashion. They're a flat shoe, they're kind of lace up like a brogue but with that contrast. If you're like kind of quite cute and preppy you probably got it with like frilly socks and your big 50 skirt but the rockabillies enjoyed it too. There was a lot of preppiness in the 50s as well as those cool beatnik styles and all those other subcultures let's not forget. They might not have been dressed up as much as their mum but they were still wearing a nice pearl, they were still wearing kind of varsity looks, they had those long skirts on, maybe they had a heel, maybe they didn't. There was still a lot of very sweet, girly, pastely looks for teens. Or even looks that nowadays would look quite nerdy. These kind of knits and jumpers tucked into these long tartan skirts and these high socks up the leg with the saddle shoes. Teddy boys wore, they called them frock coats. They were very long. They had a lot of cowboy details. So like the pocket, you get this kind of thin black pocket on it and it's got like these little triangles on either side and they have these big velvet lapels and the shoes were creepers. You probably see them more nowadays with kind of alternative fashion like tumbler girls would bring back the creepers and they were also quite big in like the 70s punk movements but they kind of started in the teddy boy era. They'd be wearing like a thin drain pipe kind of trouser and then they'd have this big creeper platform shoe. So it was quite a look. The hair was quite similar to the greaser as well. These kind of jelly rolls, they called them. The rolled hairstyles were still quite 40s in style. All the rolls, they called them victory rolls. Now, people having money after the war meant that you could spend more of it on the big silver screen and you're getting icons such as Marilyn Monroe and James Dean that many people aspire to look like. Marilyn had this hourglass body, which was the kind of body shape that you wanted to have in the 1950s. All of the clothes showed off the curves and that tiny little waist and how it looked fairly equal. It's more curvy body shape. Now, unfortunately, there do tend to be trends in every era with an, a body shape that people want to have. And that doesn't mean getting surgery necessarily to change your body shape, but it can mean wearing clothes in different shapes and sizes to make it look like you have that body shape. So for instance, nowadays that kind of Kim Kardashian bummy look is pretty trendy and a lot of people will wear certain things to show off that area of themselves. 60s was a completely different body shape to the 50s but we're on the 50s video right now so a lot of people wanted to look like 
Marilyn. The way they would do that would be having that tiny coloured contrasted belt to really highlight this is where my waist is. And again, that pointy bra giving you that real kind of almost like a cartoon character female-y shape. Another icon of the time, as I mentioned earlier, was Audrey Hepburn. She was different style. So we've got Marilyn with blondy blue eyes look. Audrey was quite dainty, a bit smaller, a bit less curvy. She had darker hair, very sharp features. She would wear that kind of flicked eyeliner a lot. Marilyn had this kind of film star glamour, the sparkles, the hot pink, this femininity. Audrey Hepburn used to be a ballet dancer, which is why her figure is more slender and athletic. So her style tended to show off that more. Audrey Hepburn exclusively wore Givenchy throughout her career whenever she was at a red carpet event and she wore Givenchy all throughout a lot of her films like Sabrina for instance. Another icon was Grace Kelly who was a film star and then she married royalty, the Prince of Monaco and became the Princess of Monaco. This is a bit like how every era has like a kind of royal person that you aspire to look like fashion wise, she was that person. Everyone was looking at her wedding dress for inspiration, which is actually quite similar to the wedding dress that Kate Middleton wore. Hermes even named a bag after her. And as I mentioned earlier, James Dean, he was a really big icon. He was taking that youth culture again and putting it on the silver screen with films like Rebel Without Cause. His style was very simple and understated and it is so doable now. He was wearing those kind of sports jackets, the plain white t-shirt, the jean. He had the rolls in his hair, but it looked effortless. It wasn't too much, it wasn't too greasy. His off-camera looks were very cool and simple and understated. Really good classic style icon. Getting a bit more into menswear, it had started to become more casual. Before, people were pretty much suits, ties all the time. But now we're getting more pattern in our shirts. It's less just white and black and grey. We're getting some more colour, some more fun, some more funky. People are starting to wear things like sweater vests and cardigans to the workplace, which they weren't doing before. Trousers were typically worn on the waist. I know nowadays that's not such a common thing, but it's quite a calling card of the 50s if you want to incorporate that into your wardrobe. Typically the shirts were tucked in, you could see the belt and you can see the pleats on the trousers. This is really good if maybe you're a slim guy and you want to add a bit of volume into your look. If you were a guy and you're not as rock and roll as greaser and those kind of looks, your teddy boy is a bit too much for you, then you've probably got more of the preppy style. You see these kind of schooly preppy looks, they were really big in the 50s. Those kind of sporty jumpers with like the stripes on the side and those kind of varsity jackets people were wearing a lot. Shirts and ties were still a thing, but they were getting more colour. You were getting knitted ties, these kind of thin knitted ties. Later in the era, later 50s, the suits were starting to slim down and become more tapered, which is what you see from the Beatles in the early 60s. So style tends to go on from era to era and then change. How do I do this style now, you might ask? Firstly, you can hit up the vintage shops. The prices aren't that different from getting high street clothes. And maybe if it's something really old, it's in mint condition, like a really lovely varsity jacket, they might charge you a little bit more for it. I'd say with vintage shopping, just have the patience to go through everything. You can find some gems. And it's a really lovely way to get unique pieces that no one else has. A lot of the time you see these things and they've got like the name sewed into them. There's still so many handmade clothes in that era that you can purchase from people that you know are really special and one of a kind and not just off the rack H&M. I really like vintage shopping because it tells a story. You pick up something and you think, who is wearing that? I've got this piece of history. I've kept this piece of history alive that's made my wardrobe feel really diverse and different. And especially when you mix it with high street as well. You have a few everyday pieces that maybe, you know, you've got your stripy t-shirt, you've got your jeans, your converse, which are pretty eraless and casual. And then you've got this amazing vintage knit that is like nothing anyone else owns that makes it really unique in yours. You can find many brands nowadays as well that specialize in vintage clothing, vintage style clothing. 
The Collective, for example, they're really great. They have lots of good things. Vivienne of Holloway are really nice to look into, for example. I can put a list as well in this video with shoppable links so you can just click them and go straight to their website and find things for you. In the 50s, as I said, many people were making their own clothes and you can still do that today. Now what they used to make clothes is something called patterns. I don't just mean a repeat pattern piece of fabric. A pattern is like a template for you to make your clothing. In the 50s, they would sell these things. They've got an illustration on the front so you can see exactly what it is you might make. And a lot of the time they're really easy to follow and you can watch tutorials. A lot of pieces from this era are pretty eraless and have not gone out of fashion and are still in the shops and you can still buy them. It's about how you put them together, which will show the era. So it's about the outfit combination. Maybe it's getting colored belt and belting your clothes. Maybe you need a few petticoats to make your skirts really big and voluminous. <laughs> Maybe it's even just getting a bit of a 50s hairstyle that will change up your look. If you find the era interesting, watch a few 50s films, find some 50s fashion books, Browse around the internet, have a look at what the celebrities are wearing in that time, see if it speaks to you, see if these are pieces that you own already and those outfits you just need to put them together. Or maybe you just need to get a few more cheap pieces that will complete that look and give you that 50 style. Perhaps it's just rolling up your jeans in a different way. Whatever it is, you can definitely make this era work for you now in the present day. It doesn't matter what your body shape is. It doesn't matter. Whoever you are, you can do this era too. I hope this has started to paint a picture of what this era looks like and help you define it when you're out in the wild and you're like, what's 50s? Ah, this is 50s. Thank you for watching this video. The next era video will be the 1960s. Goodbye.